Thank you, Camille. Logistics are not our strong suit. And thanks to all of you, truly, for taking so much time over these last several weeks to listen to Mr. Depp, to his friends, to his family, and to so many others who have come forward physically in this courtroom, some from a very long distance, to tell you the truth. Buckle up, guys. The Johnny Depp and Amber Heard legal saga continues. Just a few weeks after Amber filed for an appeal after losing the landmark Virginia trial, Depp's legal team, led by the reliable Ben Shear, officially filed an appeal to the verdict that awarded the actress $2 million in the actor's defamation trial against her. Calling Amber's counterclaim erroneous, Depp's team argued that the Pirates of the Caribbean star should not be held liable for comments made by his attorney, Adam Waldman. And Chu hasn't stopped at that. He has now gone full circle on Amber, leaving the actress pawned during her next line of action. So, what winning tricks has Ben Chu placed on the table that has left Amber's team confused? Let's find out. Months after Johnny Depp prevailed in a defamation case against Amber Heard, who accused him of physical and sexual abuse, the Oscar nominee has begun testing the status of his public image, appearing in a fashion show backed by Rihanna and an awards show in which he delivered tongue-in-cheek laugh lines about his derailed career. But while he is busy reviving his public image, his lead attorney, Ben Chu, is keeping himself busy tackling Amber. A few days ago, Amber's lawyers filed an appeal in hopes of overturning a jury's verdict that she had defamed Depp, her former husband, in 2018 by describing herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse in an opinion essay in the Washington Post. Depp, who was not named in the piece, was awarded more than $10 million in damages. Well, legally, claims that are factually accurate cannot be ruled defamatory. So, although the case technically hinged on statements from Amber's essay, much of the trial focused on whether her accusations that Depp had subjected her to repeated physical abuse, including including punching, headbutting and sexual assault were true. Depp, through his lawyers led by Chu, vehemently denied Amber's accusations, and during the trial, he argued that she was the aggressor in their relationship. In their 68-page appeal, Amber's lawyers lodged an array of legal objections, arguing that the trial was held in the wrong state and taking issue with the judge's decision to exclude certain pieces of evidence, including contemporaneous notes from therapists that they say document allegations of abuse. They asked for the jury's verdict to be reversed, either with a dismissal of Depp's claims or a new trial entirely. The trial court improperly prevented the jury from considering several separate instances in which Heard reported Depp's abuse to a medical professional. The lawyers wrote, but Chu was not taking any of that. In fact, apart from saying the appeal was worded with irrelevant complaints, the lawyer wants the court to drop the $2 million Amber was awarded. The jury awarded Amber $2 million in damages, agreeing that a lawyer for Depp defamed her in comments to a newspaper while otherwise declaring victory. The jury's emphatic favorable verdict on all three defamatory statements alleged in his complaint fully vindicated Mr. Depp and restored his reputation. The actor's lawyers wrote in their court filing, which was submitted to the Court of Appeals of Virginia. Chu argues that the Amasai briefs Amber's team filed failed to comply with the rules of the court. He then added that they are lengthy, irrelevant, and inappropriate. Just what exactly does Amber's appeal contain? The Justice League star's appeal criticizes the lower court's decision that the case could be heard in Virginia based on an argument by Depp's lawyers that the Washington Post's computer servers are there. Amber's lawyers wanted the case moved to California, where both actors lived, arguing that it was otherwise difficult for their client to call live witnesses. Amber's appeal also challenged Judge Penny Asgard's decision to allow the defamation case to proceed at all after a judge in a separate case in Britain had ruled there was evidence that Depp had repeatedly assaulted his ex-wife. Depp lost that libel suit, which he had filed after The Sun, a British tabloid newspaper, called him a wife beater. Evidence presented in the British case that Amber's lawyers argue was unfairly kept from Virginia jurors included 2015 records kept by a psychologist about a fight in which the Texas native related that Depp had started the physicality, pushed her down, as well as reports to a nurse of physical violence. Judge Asgard excluded the evidence as hearsay, and Chu believes she made the right call. If not reversed, the trial court's exclusion of contemporaneous reports of domestic abuse to medical professionals will make it more difficult for other abuse victims to prove allegations of abuse and likely deter them from coming forward, Amber's lawyers wrote. On his part, Chu contends that Amber's victory on one of three claims in her countersuit should not stand, arguing that Depp was not responsible for statements made by his lawyer at the time. In comments to the Daily Mail, the lawyer, Adam Waldman, had accused the Machete Kills actress of damaging the couple's penthouse and blaming it on Depp. If clients cannot control the details of their attorney's work, it makes little sense that clients should nonetheless be held accountable for their attorney's tortious actions, Depp wrote in his counter-appeal. 
During the hearing, a manager for Depp testified that it became impossible to get his client cast in a studio film after Amber's essay was published, and Depp said his career prospects tanked after it was made public that his ex-wife had obtained a temporary restraining order because she said he had assaulted her. Amber's lawyers argued that there were other reasons for his career troubles, including unprofessional behavior described by his former agent, such as showing up late to sets and having trouble with lines. During the trial, Depp's fans flooded the courthouse to support him. Now, over six months later, there are signals that he is again being embraced by some in the entertainment world. Last month, he had a cameo in a stream fashion show for Rihanna's lingerie line, Savage X Fenty, in which he swaggered for the camera in loungewear as dancer's blank tip. During MTV's Video Music Awards, his face was digitally superimposed onto the body of the network's Moon Man mascot, and he jokingly offered his services for weddings and bar mitzvahs, quipping, I needed the work. I just want you guys to know that I'm available for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, weddings, wakes, any old thing you need. Still, it is unclear whether major Hollywood studios will be willing to back Depp, who for decades was a coveted leading man. In addition to his starring role as Jack Sparrow in five Pirates of the Caribbean movies, he received Oscar nominations for Sweeney Todd in Finding Neverland. Depp, 59, is now involved in at least two movies, a French historical drama by the filmmaker Maywen in which Mr. Depp plays King Louis XV, and a film about the Italian artist Amdio Modigliani, which he is set to direct. Neither appears to have backing from a major American studio, though Al Pacino and Barry Navidi are involved in producing the Modigliani film. The blonde screen star, known for her work in films including Aquaman and Pineapple Express, has largely retreated from public life since the trial, when she was the subject of intense online criticism. At one point, she called the ridicule of her testimony agonizing and said she had received thousands of death threats. The actress is also in a legal dispute with an insurance company over whether the judgment in the defamation case is covered by her policy. A week before Amber filed her appeal, a group of women's and domestic violence organizations, as well as professors, activists, and lawyers, signed an open letter condemning a monetized social media environment where a woman's allegations of domestic violence and sexual assault were mocked for entertainment. Among the signatories were the feminist activist Gloria Steinem, the actress Constance Wu, and the filmmaker Amy Ziering. But not even that mass action to Turd Chu from legally dismantling Amber's arguments. With Depp and Amber having now filed their respective appeals, you'd think things would move along at a brisk pace, at least by the measure of the American justice system. But not so much in this case. Under Virginia law, a group of judges will now decide the merits of both appeals. Depending on how that goes and who is left disappointed, Amber and Depp can take the matter to the Commonwealth's Supreme Court. This means it will be years before this is settled if it ever really is. Amber believes the verdict of the highly publicized defamation case in favor of Depp has a chill effect on women. The London Fields actress said in her appeal that if allowed to stand, the holding will not be a positive outcome for abused women willing to speak against powerful men. She will be leading Depp's defense, flaunted by the super amazing Camilla Vasquez, and the dynamic duo believes Amber stands no chance against them and their client. So, are things about to get uglier? Stick around with us for more juicy, detailed, and timely updates. And that's it from us today. Until next time, bye!